Gail Trotter, a conservative voice for you, right inside our nation's capital. Legal and political analysis. Now, The Gail Trotter Show. Hi, I'm Gail Trotter, host of The Gail Trotter Show. Thank you so much for joining me today. I was thinking over the weekend about what is the most important political story that we're experiencing right now. And I think it's the dramatic explanation last week that President Obama's team was unmasking American citizens without cause and revealing information that they had probably for political purposes. I did some research on this and I went and looked at an article written by one of my favorite legal writers, Andy McCarthy. McCarthy, which I'm going to link to down below, and another piece by Fred Flights, who has served in the national security area of the United States government for 25 years. And I think these articles encapsulate the three points that I want to share with you today that I take from the information and the reporting that they've done on what happened under the Obama administration and what that means for us as Americans. So I have three points on this that I want to share with you today. The first point is that Americans value privacy. It is so important to Americans to have that privacy. I hear a lot of times that people say, well, who cares if you're monitored or your private information is exposed? Because as long as you're not committing a crime, you have nothing to worry about and you shouldn't care if the government or anybody else has your information. Well, we know that's not true because we all have a right to privacy. We have our understanding that what happens in our lives is subject to us deciding if we want to share it with people. So there's definitely things in everybody's life that we feel like could uh, be used to impugn us, to make us look bad, and being human beings, we're not perfect, and we certainly have situations that we run into where everything is not copacetic. And so we want to make sure that we're able to keep the things that people have an expectation of privacy about private. Second point I want to share with you today is that Americans value fair play. So when you think about the great sports teams and whether or not betting has been done and changed the outcome of a World Series in baseball or the fact that uh, deflated footballs might have changed the outcome of the Super Bowl or trying to understand the signals of an opposing team or getting inside information in major sporting events, that all goes to this very innate notion that Americans have that we believe in fair play. We want to be fierce competitors, but we want to make sure that we're being fierce competitors according to the rules of the game. And we're not sneaking around and getting inside information that we can use for bad purposes. No, we want to be on the battlefield or the play on the court of play. And we want to make sure that it's a mano a mano. It's a competition between people who are playing by the rules. And my third point I want to share with you about on this today is that Americans do not like hypocrites. And so I think when you look at the story from this week about the unmasking, it plays into all three of those points that I want to talk with you about today. That Americans value privacy, that Americans value fair play, and that Americans do not like hypocrisy. So if we go to this article by Andy McCarthy, it's entitled, Unmasking, the real story is when Flynn was not masked in the first place. And Andy goes into depth describing how if you look at the records that were released last week of unmasking, it's very interesting because there was so much unmasking requests done of General Flynn, but there was no unmasking request around the date of the call with the Russian ambassador to the United States, Sergei Kislyak. And Andy was trying to understand this because if the entire interview was based on this communication between General Flynn and Kislyak, and there was all this back and forth about how it was uh, the trans transcribed by the FBI and they had that information, then there should have been an unmasking so that they knew that it was General Flynn. And Andy McCarthy makes a point, no, he was not unmasked, and how much worse is it that they had General Flynn in their sights as a possible foreign agent when obviously this 33-year combat veteran was not a foreign agent. They just hated 
candidate Donald Trump. They hated President Trump. They wanted to do whatever they could to stop his administration, not only because they were personally offended by him, but also because they were afraid that President Trump would successfully roll back so much of the Obama administration because so many things he did were by pen and by phone, and so they were easily reversed by an executive order, but also it would be revealed once President Trump's experts got in there, like General Flynn, who were familiar with the intelligence community, they would reveal all the abuses of the Obama administration years. So in this article by Andy McCarthy, he says as the conclusion, let's not miss the forest for the trees. This is not just about unmasking. It is about how pervasively the Obama administration was monitoring the Trump campaign. So that takes us to my second point. Americans value fair play. So even when we're not talking about criminal abuses of the Obama administration that we have covered in other episodes, and I think will continue to be a topic of very important discussion going forward, just think about the higher moral issue, ethical issue of fair play. If President Obama's administration was using the vast power of the federal government to spy on their political opponents, not only to prevent the election of Donald Trump, but also to hamper his administration, that is not fair play. We are Americans, we believe in our republic, we believe in being able to vote, we want the best woman or the best man out there with their ideas who can engage the American voter and convince them that they can deliver what the American voter cares about. And to think about an administration harnessing the intelligence powers of the federal government to defeat a candidate or to prevent that candidate from being successful once he's in office, it violates that very notion that Americans have of fair play. And so when you have President Obama, like this over this weekend, addressing to graduates of the 2020 year in high school, college, uh, and saying that this uh, problem that we have with leaders not being responsible and acting like little kids, it's quite ironic given the information that has come out this week about the abuses of his, of his administration. And so when I think about the second point that Americans so value fair play, I think this has to go into any reckoning of the legacy of President Obama. And you also have to take that into account if any of these people are so lucky that someone they support is elected for president one day again, then they should not be given positions of power because they used it for ill purposes. They violated probably the law, but also this notion of fair play. They violated the privacy of Americans because they didn't like their politics, because they didn't want to lose power, and they violated this idea of fair play, that their ideas are good enough that they're going to win the American voter over to vote for them, instead of uh, depending on that, which is the right way to want to win an election, they wanted to try and get inside information and harm their political opponents. So looking at this piece by Fred Flights, the title of it, which I'm going to link down below, is Obamagate, How Obama Administration Apparently Weaponized Intelligence Agencies for Political Attacks. And Fred goes through very succinctly how when he was in a position to see unmasking of American citizens, it was done very sparingly. And this gets to my third point, that Americans do not like hypocrisy and can spot hypocrites. And Tucker Carlson had a great segment last week talking about how Joe Biden, who was one of the people who unmasked General Flynn during his tenure as vice president during the Obama administration years, Joe Biden, when he was a senator, attacked John Bolton for having 10 people unmasked over a period of several years. And when John Bolton had responsibility, unlike the vice president, for helping make policy. And I think Tucker Carlson really called out the hypocrisy, not only of the Obama administration, but particularly Joe Biden, 
who is saying, oh, it's no big deal, it's routine, all this unmasking is routine. And yet when it came to a Republican who was trying to be uh, confirmed for UN ambassador, then, then Joe Biden thought it was outrageous that there was unmasking. And so I think when we look back on the information that we've received about the unmaskings done by people prominent people in the Obama administration, including, including Samantha Powell, who was Obama's representative to the United Nations, who had no reason to be unmasking the number and number of people and number of times that she unmasked. And then she ended up telling Congress that she didn't even unmask all those people. So that's something that needs to be chased down. I think we're going to see that this is such a violation of privacy it's such a violation of the rules of fair play, and it just shows how hypocritical Democrats are, how their number one value is holding on to power. And Fred Flights makes the excellent point that the rules around unmasking and intelligence surveillance of American citizens, particularly Congress members, it needs to be tightened. We need to have a full investigation of who all was unmasked. Because remember, last week the news that we had was specifically dealing with unmasking of General Flynn, which was an inordinate number of unmaskings of General Flynn. But we still don't know how much the Obama administration did this. And you combine this with monitoring of journalists like James Rosen. You combine this with uh, the targeting of Tea Party and patriotic and liberty titled uh, nonprofits during the 2012 election by the IRS when President Obama was in office. I think this all comes together to show that Americans' privacy was violated, that the Obama administration didn't care about fair play in politics, and that they're hypocrites when they when they insult people about abuses when they themselves were not only doing that, they're projecting that onto their political opponents. So I think this is the most important political story this week. I hope we continue to get more information on it and an investigation. Please read these two pieces by Fred Flights and Andy McCarthy that I will link down below. And thank you so much for joining me today. Please subscribe below, hit the bell, and comment down below on what topic you think is the most important political story in the United States right now. Thanks for listening to The Gail Trotter Show, right in D.C. Be sure to sign up for her mailing list on her website, gailtrotter.com. And also follow her on Twitter, at Gail Trotter, as well as on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe now, it's easy. Thanks for listening. Share the truth. Share The Gail Trotter Show.